It is the final trading session of the third quarter. Here now is Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, stocks on track to end September positive. It's incredible. Uh, it's incredible what a quiet bull market this is. September is a month that I actually uh, care about. I tend not to do calendar analysis saying this month's week, this month's historically week, except for September. And a lot of that is because of belief that October is supposed to be so bad. October is actually quite a good uh, month. But also because when I was a hedge fund manager, if I was up a lot in the month of September, I always closed my books at the end of September and then traded daytime. In other words, came in flat every day and just did day trading. I was not alone. I was taught that by some of the biggest hedge funds when there weren't that many, you know, more than 500 hedge funds in the business when I started. So I'm again, you're, you know, you always have the lock-in issue. You always have the idea that tech is going to be weak when they report because international is, tends to be weak in tech. That's not happening this time. Um, I also find that uh, if don't forget, it's the 30th anniversary of the crash. So uh, people are going to talk about the crash. So why not get out ahead of the crash? So here we are. I thought September would be bad, and it wasn't. Uh, rather remarkable, we raised a lot of cash for Action Alerts, and we did apply too much. We had our meeting this morning uh, talking about the club call, and we had put a little more money to work than I would have liked, uh, but at the same time, it turned out to be right. So your number one tip for investors in October? Well, you, you stay focused on the fundamentals. Okay. Obviously, we've got um, some critical, critical earnings reports coming up. Mm. If uh, We have a lot of Fed speak next week. If the Fed speakers are going to be positive about the economy, particularly Bill Dudley next Friday, then I think you're going to have a uh, surety about Fed rate hike in December, which means that even a Wells Fargo is a buy. Hmm. And uh, Wells is not my uh, favorite name. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, we like key and we like city. But just be aware that the bank stocks are going to set the tone and they have the ability to be able to say good things if we think a rate hike is in the bank. All right, it's great advice, Jim. Thanks for that. Let's move on to individual stocks. KB Home, quite a rise in we revenue. We recommended KB Home uh, on real money when it was 12, 13 on a takeover basis. Well, it turned out to go far further. Uh, and we did that because the book value was so high. A lot of the analysts doubted us. We were actually officially doubted by an analyst in, uh, in, in research. And that was a great mistake. Because what people don't realize about the home builders is if you own land in places where it's difficult to build, in particular in California, where the rules are so difficult, then you have a leg up. They had a leg up. That was a good selection. I don't know if we want to still buy it here. Lenar reports next week. Very important quarter. Will be obscured by storm damage. I like Lenar. All right, we'll watch for Lennar. Let me also ask you about Amazon. They're sort of discovering some of Whole Foods' tech woes well, with this hack. Well, it's interesting because the point of sale system at, say, the beer garden, say, uh, the places where they serve food, versus the point of sale systems at the actual store were different. Uh, so therefore, you weren't hacked that badly. Well, wait a second. What does this say about the technology of Whole Foods that the point of sales were different? Now, you may come up with some reason why that is. I come back and I say that is not right because you can't really assess algorithmically what the demand is unless those systems are joined. Whole Foods has the best food, but they don't have the best systems. Watch out to see what Amazon does. That merger is incredibly important. What did you think of John Mackey's Houdini remarks? I thought that was interesting. Well, John is um, quirky. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like the way that the activist tweet, uh, treated John. John made major changes to the board, and it didn't seem to matter to them at all. So I think John got fed up. I've always felt that Whole Foods was not valued correctly, but I, because the, it was always being valued in same-store sales, and that's not necessarily the way to value it, uh, because on a square, sales per square foot is awesome. But you know what? The market is the market. It makes its judgment. And under that, guys, for the last two years, Whole Foods was a failure and deserved to be sold. I am hoping that Walter Robb, one of the finest executives in the land, comes back and runs it for Amazon. Powerful and potent combination if it occurs. We'll watch that one. Meanwhile, moving to social media, Senator Mark Warner is upset about Twitter's efforts to stop Russia. Well, everybody's upset about the um, social media company's inability to stop Russia. May I suggest to the Senate that the Russians are not idiots. They knew how to do it. And they it are very hard to block. There's a notion that if these organizations, Twitter, Facebook, Google, would put their minds to it, all this would go away. I am telling you the bad guys are more clever. Think about the bad guys in social media like the bad guys in cybersecurity. Mm. And understand, they know how to beat you. 
So yes, I think Twitter, everyone has been lethargic about trying to meet these situations, but I have to tell you that I feel very strongly that b blaming Twitter on this, blaming these other guys is a little, uh, let's say, like uh, calling the kettle black. The Congress should have done something about Russia a long time ago. Hmm. Uh, but you like Facebook stock over Twitter stock? Uh, very much so, and I happen to like uh, Google. I like uh, Google Web Services. Of course, that's Alphabet. You notice that stock's sneaking up. Uh, by the way, I think Amazon's going to make a, a serious run at 1,000 if you want to know how I feel huh. about these stocks. And uh, Facebook, Alphabet, just a reminder, Action Alerts plus holdings. Uh, moving on to Alcoa, quite a bullish note from Citi. What yes, did you make? Yes, now, Klaus Kleinfeld, um, who was the architect of the breakup of Alcoa and Arconic, always felt, he had been in China a number of times, he always felt that the Chinese respiratory issues would come to a head uh, and, and be an issue for the government to be able to stay in power. Uh, and he had very a very uh, geopolitically wise man, Klaus, obviously deposed because of, a, uh, of something that was inconsistent with the demeanor of what we want from CEOs. Uh, but the Alcoa stub, so to speak, is on fire, and it's because of a sh shutting of smelting uh, in China that makes it so that there's more demand for the alumina that Alcoa produces. It, it's really, um, I'd say, a virtuous circle for the company that is AA. Hmm. I want to talk a little bit about healthcare because on Mad Money you said that Centene is actually quite a beneficiary of the delayed Michael repeat. Michael Nidorf is a genius. He's the CEO and he figured out early on ways to be able to profit from Obamacare and still do a good job for his customers. And I don't know why the other guys didn't. I don't know why uh, Aetna, Anthem, Cigna, Humana didn't. United Health, fabulous company like the stock, bullpen name, had to take it off. So yeah, you know, the club, I've been I was negligent in not getting this uh, United Health in because they have uh, this Optum, which is a fabulous algorithmic mm -hmm. outfit. Uh, but Centene is a company whose stock was on fire, and then you had that last ditch attempt to be able to repeal and replace that failed. It drived, it drove Centene stock down. I happened to have an interview with Michael Nidorf right on the day that it drove it down. He said, look, when this, this is gonna fail, and when it's failed, you're gonna see our stock shoot up. And what I am telling you is it's going to shoot up. Hmm. All right, Jim, we'll watch that one. Shifting gears, Jim, Friday, today is National Coffee Day. How are you celebrating? Well, Starbucks has <laughs> got a, there's a very negative note about Starbucks today, um, saying that, uh, the, that the traffic is bad for them. I think that the, uh, they're solving their mobile pay issue. I think there will be a reset of expectations. And when that happens, people will buy the stock. We told people in the, in the mid 60s and low 60s to sell, 63, 64. Uh, back at 53, we are buyer. Uh, could the stock go to 50? Yes, we're not big in the stock yet, uh, but that's my approach. All right, we'll watch for your bulletins on that one. Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Have a great Thank weekend. You Thank you, you so much for more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio. Please head to actionalertsplus.com.